All right, so my name is Gediminas and welcome to our weekly training call. And today we're gonna to talk about having a successful home meeting, right? Uh, some people call it PBR for personal business reception, but whatever you call it is basically a meeting that somebody has at their home and invites friends and family who live in the same town or in the same city to attend and to learn more about the business opportunity that they have just joined, etc. So normally you wanna run this meeting within three to five days of your new distributor joining the business. Or if you're brand new, you want to run it within three to five days of joining the business, right? Because that's when the excitement is still hot. That's when, you know, you, your passion is, uh, passion is at the most high, etc. And that's when you really want to share it with people, not six months after joining an amazing opportunity. You want to now share it with your family and friends. You want to share it as soon as possible, right? So you want to run it within three to five days of your brand new business partner joining the business. So I'm going to run through seven steps uh, that should be included within your home meeting or, or seven parts of this whole meeting. So first of all, uh, it says be enthusiastic. Now, that's not you as a sponsor. Well, you should be enthusiastic as well. But that goes to the host, the person who is running their home, home meeting. They should be enthusiastic. And the first uh, thing they should do when you know the guests have gathered and they started their home meeting first thing they should do they should tell the guests their why why have they made a decision to join the business why they made a decision to build a network marketing business why have they made a decision to be part of this company they should share their reasons and their why and they should do it in a way that other people who are attending their meeting, you know, friends, family, work colleagues, etc., they can relate to that, right? So maybe talking about things they didn't like in their life, like having to fight through traffic every day, maybe, you know, hating the job that they were doing, maybe not being able to spend enough time with their family, or whatever the reasons, or maybe not being able to afford stuff, or not being paid enough, etc. So whatever it is that they feel you know the their why was that the motivation was to join the business and to do the business they should share it first of all because this way the guest will be able to relate to that and they will be able to say well i'm not being paid enough i want those things in my life too you know so that will encourage them maybe down later on in a meeting to actually make a decision and join the business so that's step one be enthusiastic second step keep the presentation brief right we know that people's attention span is like, you know, cupcake, right? It's not long. People lose their interest very fast, especially now with all of the technology, etc. when we are being bombarded with information. So the actual business opportunity presentation should be as brief as possible. You know, you're probably looking at about 15 to 20 minutes long. That's all. It shouldn't be hours and hours and hours, right? So if you as a sponsor or you as a leader are there at that whole meeting, then you can run the business opportunity presentation. If you are not there, then the brand new person should stick a DVD or should play a video on YouTube or whatever. They should use a third party tool. They shouldn't be presenting the business themselves. Why? That's not to say that your brand new person is incompetent and they don't know what they're talking about, which might be the case, right? That's not about that. It's about duplication. Because if they do the presentation themselves, People who are attending their meeting might be thinking, I could not do what he does, right? But if they play a video on YouTube or if they play a DVD, now that person sitting as their guest might think, well, I could play DVD to other people. You know, that's not too difficult. That's not a big deal, right? So this way, uh, it, it becomes more duplicatable, right? It becomes more duplicatable where everybody else can do exactly the same. And that's what we want in our business. Lots of people doing very simple things, right? So that's why they have to keep the presentation brief and they have to use third party. Either the, the sponsor should present or they should play a video or whatever, whatnot, right? Then uh, step number three is facts tell, stories sell, right? So what the host and you as a leader, if you're there, should focus on also is sharing stories. First of all, sharing product stories, right? So for example, if, if, if a host is brand new in business and they just started and tried a couple of products, they should tell what are they liked about these products, what are they enjoying about these products, etc. And if you are there as a sponsor, as a leader, again, you can share your product stories, you know, or maybe stories you've heard of other people who used maybe some of our food supplements, maybe some of our makeup, maybe some of our creams or whatnot, right? So share product stories, it's powerful, right? Facts tell, stories sell, right? 
Secondly, sharing opportunity stories, right? Sharing other success stories about people who achieved high levels of income, about people who maybe qualified for cars, maybe qualified for holiday trips or whatever, right? Again, to give them an idea of other people succeeding, right? Like right now, last month, we had a person who hit diamond in UK, a brand new diamond, right? And the lady made 15,000 pounds in one month. Guess what? I'm talking to every single person that I'm talking, I'm mentioning that person, right? I'm not shopping, shutting up about it, right? Because it's an amazing story, right? And it's a story that I can use now and tell people, right? It's a, it's a true story. It's about somebody who's a real person, not a superhuman or whatever, right? Who achieved very, very interesting things, right? Within a, just a relatively short space of time. So you can share these stories. They will do a lot more selling if you like they will may influence people into making a decision a lot more than the dry facts and figures of marketing plan and you know how many legs you need to build and things like that right so that's step number three facts tell stories sell step number four is paint the vision preferably again the host the, the brand new business partner who's hosting the meeting they should share their vision right what that means is basically involving the guests to, for the guests to see that they're going to be part of something bigger, not just trying to achieve their own little extra income goals or whatever, but they're going to be part of something bigger. So the host preferably should share their vision. What do they want to achieve and what all of us together in this meeting are we going to achieve, right? We're going to build this business and this is what we're going to do, guys. This is what we're going to achieve. This is what we're going to do. Maybe we're going to contribute to some causes. Maybe we're going to, uh, you know, contribute to some charities. Maybe we're going to do some big things or whatever, right? But paint the vision, right? Because nobody, I mean, people might get excited about making some extra income, etc. But let's face it, when you're faced with all the challenges, when you're faced with all the problems, when you're faced with all the difficulties in business, you're not going to be motivated or you're not going to keep going because you're going to go, oh, but I still need to make some extra income, right? That is not motivating, right? That is not so passionate as something that can be deep down and something can be huge, right? Like retiring your parents or buying a house for your parents or whatever, right? Or, or giving your kids life that you know, you've never had or letting your kids go to private school or whatever, right? These are the goals or the whys that will push you through the challenges, etc. So again, by painting the vision, a person can give the attendees a better feel what this business could actually mean for them, what it could give to them, right? So that was step number four. Step number five is at the end, don't invite questions. The worst thing you can do at the end of the business opportunity presentation is say, any questions, right? <laughs> because guess what? People usually who are going to ask questions, are they the positive ones or the negative ones, right? I'll give you a second to think about it, right? If you thought negative ones, you are right, right? <laughs> because usually it's the negative people going to say, oh, what about that? And they're going to start throwing stuff that's going to destroy your whole presentation, right? So what you want to do is you don't want to invite questions because you ask, you get what you ask for. So if you ask for questions, you're going to get questions. But assume that people are joining the business. People are ready, right? So you invite people to join the business and if some of them have questions, you answer questions individually to the side. Because one, most people are not interested in their question. Two, their question might put off other people, right? My, their question might be a question that another person haven't thought of, right? So you don't want to do that, right? So just assume the sale. Assume people are signing up. That's normal. In my head, when I'm doing a business opportunity presentation, it's not normal not to join my business. That's my thinking in my head, right? It's like, it's normal to join my business. If you saw my presentation, you join my team. There's like, you don't think about it. You don't go home and sleep on it, right? You join my business. So be because I have that type of mindset, guess what happens most of the time when I present the business to people? They join my business. <laughs> I don't know why, right? Maybe I have that mindset, right? So, but if you start, you know, if you expect questions and if you expect challenges, then that's what you're going to get more of, right? So one of the best things, uh, you know, to ask people um, at the end of the presentation, if you, let's say you're presenting to 20 or, or 30 people, etc., at the end of your presentation, you need to say, okay, guys, so I want you to stay seated for a moment. I want you to turn to the person who invited you today and tell them three things you like the best from what you saw today and let it go. Right? So now these prospects, instead of getting, oh, I've got 50 million questions. Now they turn to the person who invited them 
and they go, well, I like the money, I like the products, and I like that I can retire, right? Awesome, let's help you to do that, right? Does that make sense? Not if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, some of you are nodding. Okay, good, 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 right? So, and if some of them have questions, like I said, you can answer them to the side, etc. right? But that gets the ball rolling, right? Okay, um, step number six is have applications ready, right? So if you're doing paper applications, you should have paper applications and a pens ready, right? Like don't go at this point, like, oh, let me go and find the applications, right? You need to be prepared, you need to be on point, right? You need to be professional so that attendees who are there, they see that this guy or this lady, they know what they're doing, right? They're on top of it, they, they've got the ball, right? So you have the applications ready and just give them out or have them on the table laid out or whatever, right? Best thing to do is actually give an application each to each person who came to the thing, right? As, again, assuming that they're all joining, right? So you give application. If they're not going to join, guess what? They're going to leave the application behind when they leave the door, right? But if they're joining, they've got the application in their hands, right? They don't have to now be intimidated to have to stand up, walk across the room, pick an application from a table or whatever, right? You have them in their hands straight away, right? So have, or if you're doing it online, if you're going to do the registration online, then have the computer or the iPad or whatever you're going to be using for the registration ready and connected to the internet and all of that. And then last step number seven for those people and this is vital for those people who you recruit on the night you book their personal business reception their home meeting there and then right before they leave the house right so if i'm running a meeting at somebody's home and let's say they invited 15 friends and by the end of the home meeting three of those friends made a decision to join the business right so those three guys, we're going to sit down with them and say, okay, so now first thing we need to do with you before you leave today is make a decide on the date when you want to have your whole meeting. Because as a leader, my business is, uh, my schedule is busy. So I want to make sure that you get the priority of my time before somebody else books in, you know, their whole meeting in your spot. So when would you like to have yours within the next three to five days? And a person can give that date, et cetera, straight away, right? Now, imagine if you just did that. If you did a home-based meeting and three people joined and booked their home meetings, you went to those three meetings and out of those three meetings, you got three recruits each. That's another nine meetings. If you get another three meetings from those nine meetings, that's 27 meetings. Before you know, you are a recruiting machine. You're just going from home presentation to home meeting to home meeting to home meeting to home meeting, driving your business deep, right? Driving your business stable, driving your business huge, right? So it just takes a little bit of organization, it takes a little bit of commitment, and it takes a little bit of uh, you know, forward thinking, planning in advance. They say if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail, right? So most of you heard that, right? Now, before we wrap up, I'm going to give you one bonus one. I know I told you seven steps, <laughs> but I'm going to give you a bonus one. And the bonus one is called dangle the carrot, right? Now, what on earth do I mean by that, by dangle the carrot? Well, when, you, when the host is running the meeting or you are doing the presentation or whichever one of you, it doesn't really matter. When you're doing the presentation or at the end of the presentation, or at the, one stage of the, of the thing, but preferably either during the presentation or after the presentation, just before it, times, it comes the time for them to make a decision, you can dangle the carrot. What does that mean? You can say, guys, um, Sophie here, uh, is amazing lady. She invited all of you guys tonight for this amazing business opportunity presentation. And I'm sure, uh, you know, a lot of you are already thinking about joining this business, but I'm going to give you an incentive. You see, Sophie is on fire and she's going to organize another couple of meetings uh, very, very soon where we're going to have another couple of groups of people coming in for a business opportunity presentation. But those of you guys who join tonight, you will be first to join in Sophie's team. And you will stand a chance that the other group, when they join, the other event that we're doing in a couple of days, those people can then be signed under you because you made a decision to join before them, right? And if those people sign under you then, then that means you're going to be making money of their personal sales and of their team for the rest of your life. You're going to be getting the override on all of those people for the rest of your life. So I would highly encourage you to make a decision tonight before you leave this house 
because the other group of people are going to be coming into this business in a couple of days. And I would like you to benefit from all of those people joining the business, you know, and making the overrides from all of those people joining the business. Do you think that would help them to make a decision to join the business? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Because the fear of loss is stronger than the desire to gain. Right. So most people would, would, would have a lot more emotion attached to losing something than actually gaining something. So when you tell somebody that, look, you, you can think about it, you can sleep on it, it's no problem. But then, you know, Lucy will join next week and she's not going to be under you. So that means for the rest of your life, you're going to miss out on an income you could have gotten from this person that we registered under you, right? So that's just a little tip for you to use in a home meeting to encourage people to make a decision to join the business there and then and to make the decision. I hope this training was useful for you guys. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Uh, love you loads. I'll see you.